Welcome to Film and Page. I'm Dominic. And it looks like uh, the CW is up for sale. So this is uh, rather interesting news. So this article is from The Hollywood Reporter. Viacom, CBS, and Warner Media exploring sale of the CW. The CW is up for sale. The broadcast network home to shows like Batwoman and Walker is being shopped by its corporate owners, Viacom, CBS, and Warner Media. Multiple sources confirmed to The Hollywood Reporter. The Wall Street Journal, which first reported the news, says that local TV giant Nexstar is among the potential suitors. Nexstar, which owns 199 local TV stations as well as cable channel news station and the hill is one of the largest owners of the cw stations it isn't immediately clear whether viacom cbs and warner media plan to sell the entire network or retain minority stakes news of the possible sale arrives as the network a joint venture between cbs and warner media has never been profitable since its formation in 2006 when the two companies merged the former UPN and the Warner Brother Network. Much of the revenue that is generated from the younger skewing network is generated from international and streaming sales, such scripted originals as The Flash and Dynasty. The CW previously had a long-standing output deal with Netflix that helped series like Riverdale and All American reach broader audiences and ultimately grow on linear. That pact ended in 2019 as Warner Brothers TV and CBS Studios shifted library deals to their respective streamers, HBO Max and Paramount+. Plus. Also impacting the profit margins on originals is the fact that foreign sales have almost entirely ended as CBS Studios and Warners look to retain those rights for their respective streamers. So a pretty interesting article uh, that the CW uh, is might be getting shopped around here for sale. So now on Twitter, there's a lot, um, the reaction to it, I seen people retweeting it and bounding in the comics, of course, is blaming the whole thing on <laughs> uh, the CW going woke. And that's why, and it's bleeding money and that's why it's up for sale. But it just sounds like from reading this article, because um, bounding in the comics, they're, they're always like sensationalized and they're very partisan. So you can't really, it's hard for me to take them serious as a news source. But from reading this article, it sounds like to me that now that Warner Brothers has HBO Max and CBS has Paramount Plus, it kind of seems pointless to be spreading their content out to these other smaller channels when they can just have all their own stuff in-house. Like, why is all the DC shows on CW now? Like, the CW doesn't really serve that kind of a purpose anymore because it was started back in 2006 before there was, you know, Netflix wasn't a big thing like it is now back then. You didn't have all these streaming channels and all that kind of stuff. So, like, the whole landscape of TV is changing. So that's what it sounds like to me. It has nothing to do with uh, CW going woke or anything like that or shows going woke. Um, it sounds like they just want to get all their own all their own stuff back because you know what the cw th there has to be like profit splitting between paramount and warner brothers and it sounds like more of a hassle anything uh where now they could just have it all on their own streaming services but funny enough that uh, this news should come out today because it was last weekend i believe i put on this youtube video and so sometimes i do this i'll put on a, i'll find a youtube video that has something that is seems remotely interesting and something that's kind of long, like at least an hour. And if I'm, and I'll do this if I'm trying to sleep. So I'll put it on, let the person talk. And if it is halfway interesting, I'll just pass right out. So usually I'll do that if I'm trying to sleep. So I was kind of tired one afternoon. I was wanted to take a nap. So I found this, this video popped up in my recommendations and it was uh, friendly space. Ninja was the name of the channel. Uh, never seen the channel before. It just came up in uh, somehow got recommended to me and it was uh how the flash basically turned to crap <laughs> that was the title of it and it was a one hour so i watched it and it was a re actually really interesting video the, the the person who did the video really dug into why this show sunk like the titanic and why it's never been any good um because and, and and not only this show but all the cw shows right across the board a lot of these DC shows have been just bleeding uh, viewership. 
Like nobody's watching them. I don't know how they can keep them on the air, how they can keep them going. And the writing for these shows, are, it's just atrocious. So I, uh, the one show that I did like that was on CW, uh, it didn't start out on the CW because it started before the CW was formed, but I actually really liked Smallville. I uh, really liked that show. Um, now I was actually, it was actually, I didn't get into it till very late in the game. It was the show only had like maybe two or three seasons left when I got into it because, um, there for a long stretch, I didn't have cable or anything. So a lot of these shows I couldn't even watch, but I just happened to be at Walmart one night and they had all the seasons there. One rate, I think up to season eight of Smallville seven or eight. And it was like really, really cheap. So I remember I just bought them all there in one shot and then binged the series. And I really got into it. I actually really liked uh, Smallville. It was one of those series when I first heard about it, I couldn't really get into it. Uh, because I can remember when I first heard about Smallville, because uh, at the time, Smallville came out in 2001. And it seemed kind of odd because and a lot of people probably don't remember this, but that wasn't too long. In 2001, Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman, that wasn't off the air. That that went off the air, I think, in like 98. So it wasn't that it wasn't that long that, you know, they had just had a Superman show. So I thought it was kind of odd that they were making another Superman show that fast. And then it was going to be like a Superboy show. That's how they kind of pitched it, but without the costume. And I remember reading about it in Wizard Magazine. I remember thinking that in my mind. Oh, they just had Lois and Clark. It's kind of odd that they're doing the Superman show. So anyway, I got into it, uh, you know, I, I remember I, I think I rented the pilot at the video store, watched it like the pilot, but then never watched the show for years and years until I binged it all when I got all the seasons out at night at Walmart and actually really liked it. And uh, then when they did the spinoff of Arrow, I was kind of surprised when they did that on the CW that they didn't, you know, that uh, they didn't extend that Smallville universe because Arrow was on Smallville and I thought the guy that played him was pretty good. I was kind of surprised they just didn't take that version of Arrow and spin it off into the Arrow TV show from Smallville. But they just went a whole different route and just basically did a whole new uh, version of the Arrow character. Made it a lot more darker, a lot more gritty. That's how it kind of came out. So I kind of watched a few episodes here and there, but I never really got into Arrow. But however, I did get into the Flash uh, because I remember I really liked the old 90s Flash show. I remember I got really excited for that when that was on TV. And uh, so when they announced the new Flash show, I remember got, I, I got into it, started watching it. And the first in the pilot, when the pilot came out, I watched that and I really enjoyed that pilot. I thought it was a really good start. And that first season was actually pretty good. I really liked it. Kind of like they had a mystery that, well, it wasn't really hard to figure out, but you know, you had the 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 guy that was in the wheelchair, the 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 professor guy, the scientist guy who was like a father figure to Barry Allen, and Barry Allen really looked up to him. I can't even remember the character's name anymore. But he was actually really the reverse flash. Nobody knew it. And, you know, I thought I thought it was a really solid first season. So I liked that first season. Then I watched the second season. And Basically, that second season was a lot like the first season, but just not quite as good. So I was like, ah, I don't know, that second season was kind of soft, kind of weak. And then I started to watch the third season. The third season started to seem like it was going to be exactly like season one and season two, with these speedsters that would show up, these evil speedsters, with like a mysterious identity, but it would always be someone who was connected to the group. So I just got kind of tiresome. And... Uh, a few other things I found like the flash himself, it got to the point where he was a really hard uh, hero to root for because he was always getting beaten up and like he couldn't get motivated to do anything. Like he always needed to have a prep talk from someone to get in gear. And it's always like he, and in that video by that uh, friendly space ninja guy, he pointed out something interesting. He's pointed out that the, the reason why the flash character gets so boring, because I guess this guy, he watched all of the seasons. And he said, it only gets worse and worse and worse. So that's, so I'm glad I didn't continue on watching. I jumped off halfway through season three. But it's almost like the way the Flash is in the first season, like just trying to figure out his powers, just learning, and he needs to build confidence and all that. Well, he just he's stuck in that state like the whole series. He never, ever gets to the point where he's a competent, uh, you know, mature hero that knows what to do and knows how to take care of business. And then... Uh, uh, the, the only other time I watched any of the CW shows is I was going to get into the Batwoman show 
because uh, the Batwoman character is a character that I read some of the comics, but I just absolutely love just how the character look, looked. I love the design of it. And when I seen the pictures, I thought the design looked pretty good. And, and, and then I watched the uh, Crisis crossover that they had with the Flash and they had the uh, 90s Flash come back. That was actually pretty good. And I actually reviewed that on my channel. So I kind of went back into the CW just to check that out. And then Batwoman was actually in one of those episodes. And I thought they did a pretty good job. And I was thinking, well, maybe I might give that Batwoman show a try. And then the, and then the trailer came out and it just looked god awful. And then, you know, as I seen like the reactions to it on Twitter, it just turned out to be like a disaster, that show. And then everything that you heard that went on behind the set, uh, behind the uh, scenes, with the accents they had on set and how no one could get along with Ruby Rose and how she ended up leaving the show. It just seemed like an absolute dumpster fire. Uh, and just seemed like nobody was watching it. And then Supergirl, I uh, gave that one, I watched the pilot of Supergirl and that was just like super cheesy. And then I think the only other one I watched of Supergirl is when they did the flash, uh, the crossover with her and the flash where he ended up coming into her universe and she helped him get back to his and stuff like that. But other than that, I kind of totally lost interest in uh, all the CW stuff. Not only that, uh, when I got sick of Flash halfway through season three, that was right about the time I think that Daredevil started on Netflix. And that was like a game changer for superhero shows. It was dark. It was gritty. It was so much better than The Flash. And that first season was awesome. And it was just totally hit the nail right on the head, completely captured the mood of the comics uh, that I remembered as a kid, those Daredevil comics that I read. And uh, so I'm not surprised that they would be looking off selling it because it doesn't seem like anyone's watching these shows and they just, the, the writing just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. And they just keep pumping out seasons after season after season. And apparently they want to go 10 seasons with The Flash when nobody's really watching it now and the storylines just get worse and worse. And um, I don't know. And that was talking about Smallville again. As much as I like Smallville, I think that was kind of like uh, one complaint I had about the show, I think, is they kind of, those last few seasons felt like, you know, they were unnecessary. Like they stretched the show out too long. Because it got to the point where Clark was basically S Superman all but in name. He was like the blur and he went around and he was doing everything Superman did. And he had like the S on a black t-shirt and he had like the black long trench coat going around, you know, fighting crime and fixing wrongs. And he was like living in Metropolis. He was dating Lois. He was basically Superman. He had all these other superheroes in there. At that point, you might as well have just made him Superman. Um, I think once they got to the point where they started bringing Lois Lane in and started moving him to Metropolis, they probably should have stop the show there probably five or season five or six or something and because it just seemed like it stretched on too long uh and then of course there was like the really disappointing final episode where everyone wanted to see him in the suit and they never delivered on that even though he was pretty much had been basically superman anyway for the last two or three seasons of the show uh but I mean, the ending was pretty cool. That last scene where he opens the shirt and he has the S underneath and you hear the John Williams theme kick in. That was pretty cool. So it doesn't surprise me that they would want to get rid of CW. It only makes sense because what's the point of the CW when you got your own streaming service and you want to have as much content to draw people in to watch it. So you would just take all your shows and give it to people who probably could write them a lot better and go from there and then have it as more of a, as more content to draw people to subscribe to your streaming service. So yeah, it sounds like maybe the CW's days might be numbered. So that's everything I got to say in this video. Let me know what you think in the comments section, and I will see you at the next one. I'd like to say thank you to all of my subscribers. I appreciate you all in helping this channel grow. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Also, don't forget to hit the bell icon so you'll be notified when new videos are uploaded.